with the first pick in the 1993 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Chris Webber. <laughs> Winner is Reggie Bush. These are the allegations that Reggie Bush and his family benefited from lavish gifts from two would-be sports marketers. If that's the case, then where are things involving an investigation from either the SEC or the NCAA? June 30th, 2021. The NCAA adopts an interim policy allowing college athletes to profit off of their name, image, and likeness. NIL. This landmark decision, after years of debate of whether an athlete should be getting paid, ignited a new era of college sports. Players gaining millions of dollars, new cars, and brand deals with Gatorade, Beats, and Subway. The line that separated college and pro blurred even more following the addition of the transfer portal in 2019. You have kids that are signing million dollar NIL deals that, that haven't even played collegiate football yet in the next few years. I think we will soon see with the transfer portal and NIL, it's hard to, to think that college football isn't heading to like a, almost like free agency. Student athlete. Coined in the 1950s by the NCAA, the sole purpose of this term was to differentiate a college athlete from receiving the benefits an employee would expect. This is Ray Dennison. Dennison died during a college football game in 1955 for Fort Lewis A&M. His widow attempted to seek compensation for his death. The NCAA won in Colorado Supreme Court, making Dennison the first ever student athlete. This set the precedent that college athletes are not college employees. For 61 years, this would constitute that your labor on the field or court would net you nothing unless you could graduate to the big leagues. For reference, less than 2% of NCAA athletes will achieve that. When the system is generating billions of dollars and universities survive off of athletics programs, the rules were bound to be broken. Southern Methodist University is on a tear, just coming off of an undefeated season. They had just finished second in the nation and were primed for a lasting era of dominance. An investigation into SMU concluded the university had been paying top recruits to join the program for years, explaining why such a relatively small school rose to such prominence so fast. The punishment, known as the death penalty, would doom the program stardom probation until September 1st of 1990. SMU will be limited to seven games, none of which will be home games and none of which will be televised live. Athletic scholarships have been nixed this season and no more than 15 student athletes will be allowed financial aid next year. 1996. The University of Michigan is a regular contender for the National Men's Basketball Championship. From 92 to 93, the Fab Five, Michigan's starting lineup of Chris Weber, Jalen Rose, Jimmy King, Juwan Howard, and Ray Jackson had made two consecutive appearances in the final game. It wasn't until three years later that the NCAA discovered through a series of events starting from a car crash that Weber, the poster child of the Fab Five, had received gifts totaling $280,000 from booster Ed Martin. The NCAA in Michigan settled to vacate its entire 92-93 season all postseason appearances from 92 to 98, and forfeiting every win from 95 to 99. To this day, all records attributed to him remain scrubbed from the books. 2006. Reggie Bush just set an historic season at USC, rushing over his competition en route to a Rose Bowl appearance in which he shined. In a landslide amongst voters, Bush wins the Heisman Trophy, the most coveted of all college football awards. In most cases, bronze turns gold after exposure to air, but for Bush, it was the inverse. The NCAA revealed Bush and his family had received nearly $300,000 from a sports agent during his days in Southern California. The organizing body would rule USC would forfeit its 2005 season 
along with a ban from bowl games for the 2010 and 11 seasons. Most importantly, however, Bush was forced to forfeit his Heisman, becoming the first ever player to do so, which remains this way to modern day. All these legacies remain tainted by an era of college sports in which the players were incentivized to break the rules. For some, the problem was rooted deeper than just the NCAA. Hey, these guys are going out and you're making millions of dollars off of them. And now we're realizing the long-term implications of college football and sport and injuries. I think when I started to see how much money was involved and that, let's be honest, 80% of these athletes were African-American and they weren't getting much of it, I was like, that's a problem. You know, they should be able to get some of this. The comparisons between college and professional sports have never been greater than now with NIL, but both have been using athletes as commodities for generating revenue. It was already professional sports. The amount of money that's going into college football every year from ar around the country, it was professional sports and everyone was getting a chunk of that except for the student athletes. 